Hello, this is Mark LaRochelle from Productive Computing. Thanks for joining us on this video. In this particular lesson, we explore the brand new function called GetElementType. And this is a new function that gives you some additional flexibility that you didn't have before as a developer. This is especially true if you're working with large JSON documents. This will be your new best friend in terms of analyzing what type of element you have at your fingertips long before you actually parse the entire JSON document. So there's a lot of advantages here to this. We're going to explore this deeply in this particular video. Now, what we thought we would do is actually pull a lesson directly from our course called API Fundamentals for FileMaker Developers. That's available at ProductiveComputingUniversity.com. And if you enroll in that course, not only do you learn all about the FileMaker or the Claris Data API, but you actually learn all about JSON, which is especially good if you are brand new to the world of JSON. So if what I'm talking about here seems way too complicated and you don't even understand why you need JSON, then you might want to consider enrolling in that course. Not only will you learn all the JSON from scratch, you'll learn all about the data API, which really puts you on firm footing as a Claris FileMaker developer. You then walk away with skills that will really take everything to the next level and give you some amazing flexibility to work with data on the back end that you never thought possible in entirely new ways, far more efficient, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, in this lesson, it, this is an actual excerpt from the course. This particular lesson we make free as a free preview in the course, but we thought we'd share it here on YouTube for you to enjoy and to benefit from, hopefully. So whenever I'm learning a new function, I often create a brand new file, thereby creating a test jig environment where it's not going to be polluted and I won't be distracted with whatever complicated system I'm in the middle of as a developer. The last thing you want to do is learn something new while being in the middle of a bunch of custom menus, some layouts, some scripts, script triggers, and all that stuff that gets in your way, not to mention all the schema. So with that in mind, I'm going to create a brand new FileMaker file. Now keep in mind that when you watch this video uh, in the later years from when it was recorded, this product might be called Claris Pro or just Claris FileMaker Pro or just Claris FileMaker. Uh, all of this is in a state of flux. So I'm going to create a new blank file here and call it test.json. Put that on my desktop. Of course, it brings up the define database dialog, and I'm going to put in a single text field. I'll call it raw, and I'll put it in all uppercase. That will indicate the raw JSON that we're working with today. That'll be our storage place for it. Okay, so now let's... I need to make quite a bit of room for this because the JSON needs to be expanded and I need to see it all in one screen without having to scroll. So let me just make this a little bigger. And I'm also going to make the field a touch smaller itself, the font size. So here, there's my JSON holder in a new file called test.json. Perfect. Now let's go get some sample JSON text. And for that, I'm going to head over to the internet and I'm going to put in a search for JSON sample Claris. That should get you to working with JSON functions as part of their help file. And within this one, the one that says working with JSON functions, as you read down here, it says formatting JSON data. And then you'll see a link that says example JSON data. And I tell you what, I use this sample data for a lot of things. This is basically how I began to learn JSON. This is just perfect sample data. So copy that to your clipboard. It's a little thing that includes bakeries and products, and it has a combination of arrays and different examples of Boolean and numbers and text all in one sample. So it really is perfect. All right, so that's that. Now, if I paste this in here, it looks good except you know, the dreaded automatic spell checkers putting these dots here, which again is a distract and a distraction for us. So let me just click on that, go to layout mode and turn that automatic spell checking off. Do not apply visual spell checking. That way I won't have to see those dots because it's never going to be spelled right in the eyes of a dictionary. Okay, so there's my JSON. So now let's immediately begin with the new function. And to do that, I'm going to bring up the data viewer, which is over here under tools and it's called data viewer. Now, if you don't see data viewer under tools or you don't see tools at all, it's likely because you are not using the advanced tools in your system. So you want to go and go to your preferences and make sure that you're using your advanced tools. 
All right, so back to the data viewer, and I'm going to just clear out anything I had before and then click new here for a new expression, this plus sign down below. And let's create our expression. So this is a function, so it should show up here under JSON, J-S-O-N. And sure enough, there's all my JSON functions, and I can choose this one, the brand new one, get element type. And it's actually quite straightforward. It just requires two parameters. The first parameter is the JSON itself. It needs to know what to analyze. Where is your JSON? In our case, the JSON is right here in our file. So I'll just double click that raw text field and put that into my formula here, my expression, and it's ready to go. Now it's also asking for a key or an index or a path. This allows us to define specifically where we want it to look inside the JSON document to determine what we want to analyze because we can analyze the whole thing as a document or we can analyze just pieces and parts of it and that's what this key or index or path indicates for us so i'm just going to put in two quotes i don't want to specify anything in particular but already we have a problem line two column one missing a curly bracket or object member name so this came as a result of copying and pasting this from the web page, the Claris web page, directly into a field. So this could happen to you at any point in time when you're working with JSON. So I'm going to run this through a JSON validator online, and this will be another pro tip for you. So I've still got this JSON on my clipboard, so I'm just now going to go to another website. It's called jsonlint.com. This is one of my favorites. There's a lot of these out there, but this is one of my favorites. Just paste it in here and then click Validate JSON. What this will do is it will validate the JSON to the point where it will not only validate it, tell you if it's valid JSON, but it'll also reorganize it a bit. So now I can copy and paste this back into FileMaker or Claris, and it will reformat it. And just like that, it fixed whatever issue it had. It was probably a spacing or a paragraph return issue, something in the text that wasn't quite right but now it likes it. So it happens to be returning an object type three. So now let's take a look at the help file and we'll analyze this even further. And we'll go back to that web page that we had earlier, which was JSON Claris functions. And we'll look at the JSON functions here. And the one we want to focus on is get element type. So as you read through this, it can return several different types of JSON and indicate which one you're working with. The types are JSON string, JSON number, JSON object, array, Boolean, and null. So let's go take a look at some of these. Now, it also further uh, explains that in order to kind of see what numbers are represented with that, go to the set element function and read more. So let's read more there. This is another function altogether, but it's the one area in their help file that defines what number correlates with what type. So we got a return of three, if you remember. So that's telling us that our JSON is in the form of a JSON object. So let me grab this little key or matrix here, keep it on my, uh, keep it on the top of the screen so we can see and work with this. Okay. So that's a three, that means it's an object. So since we didn't define a specific path or a value or a key, it, it tells us that as a whole, we're looking at a JSON object type. And that's actually accurate in what we wanted to do. But if we further define uh, a, a specific path here, we're gonna see some different types show up. So in this case, I can type bakery.product. Let me show you that, bakery.product. And that returns a four. So what's a four? That's an array. So it's saying that if I were to present this whole thing, this bakery.product, it would show me everything from here to here. Let me close this. I'll just indicate that with my mouse. It, it's now looking at everything from here to here, everything from the straight bracket to the straight bracket. It sees that as a whole and it says, ah, that is an array type JSON object. And that's why it returns four. Okay, fine. What if I just wanted to identify this, this ID here? So I can further define my path. This is going to be bakery.product, but I want it to be the first record in the array. So I have to introduce an indicator that tells me which 
essentially which record or which list item I'm working with. So I want the first one because we're zero based in JSON land. So zero in the brackets there. And then I'm going to put a dot ID. And now we get type one. One is a string because it sees just this ID as a JSON type string. Okay, fair enough. While we're here, why don't we have it go look at price to see if anything changes there. So instead of ID, I'll just type price. Aha, we get a two. What's a two? A two is a number. It sees that as a number and it understands that's different than text. Also note that it's not in quotes or anything like that. The number is just a plain number, whereas donuts is in quotes. So in a way it knows that based on whether it has quotes or not. So that's a number. All right, so we've got object, array, text and number. We've done four so far. The only one we haven't done is Boolean and null. So let's take a look at Boolean. So Boolean would be true or false, the word true or the word false. Notice here the word true is again not in quotes because that's a reserved word that indicates a Boolean type value. So if I put in what's correlated to that, which is the word special, so special is the part of the JSON, and sure enough, I get a five. What's a five? A five is a Boolean type JSON object. And then we have one more to look at null. Well, we don't have any null examples in this JSON, so let's add one. Let's just put this as null here. I think this will work. Let me just see if that's a reserved word. Ah, it already did. See how it's returning a value of six? That's null. And now we've identified all the objects that the get element type has access to. And note that it does not do JSON raw. It will never return the raw value. And we know that from the help file, because when we looked at the help file here a second ago, that's the set element. I think it was the one before this. It was this one. Yeah, the get element type. Let me hide this screenshot. And it says down here, the JSON raw data type value will never be returned. See JSON element for more information. So we did all that. So down below here, there's other examples if you want to see some other examples of how this works. But I think what I would recommend is doing exactly what I did, which is to grab that example JSON from the Claris help page, paste it into a new file just like this, and begin to analyze the JSON directly. And right here you saw I, we did like five different types just by changing the path. So why would you use the JSON get element type? You can use it for a couple of reasons. One, you could use it to analyze if what you're looking at is valid JSON or not. Because if you recall, if I mess this up now, if I put a one here, this whole thing is going to break because at that point I've made my JSON object invalid. It's not really JSON anymore. So you could analyze for the first character of this function. If it's a question mark, you know you've got bad data. You don't have JSON. So you could just say if the left of this function for one character equals question mark, say it's invalid. Otherwise, analyze what type of JSON it is if you need to. Perhaps the biggest advantage of this new function is the fact that you can depict a certain part of your JSON document and analyze only that. This can greatly save you time or allow you to pinpoint different areas of the JSON document that you can analyze and determine the type prior to you parsing it. This is especially true for very large JSON documents. The function gives you the ability to define a specific path and look at a certain area, determine the type, and then from there you can make decisions. So if you're brand new to the world of JSON, I recommend you enroll in a course called API Fundamentals for FileMaker Developers. This fundamentals course includes a section dedicated for people who are brand new to JSON. And not only that, not only will you learn JSON, but you'll learn everything about the data API so that you can now construct custom websites, do your own synchronization programs, or just give you that other flexibility that you've been looking for to talk directly to FileMaker data or Claris data without actually having to connect directly to a file. Imagine being on Claris Go or FileMaker Go and being able to make a call out to your data without actually opening the file and waiting for that whole process to happen. That is like magic in a bottle. So Productive Computing University is where you want to head over for that. API Fundamentals is the name of the course. All right. Thanks for joining us on this video. Catch you on the next one.